Dr. William Davis, author of The Wheat Belly and Undoctored Books. I want to talk about the fictions of LDL cholesterol. This gets a little bit complicated, I'm afraid to say, but at the end of this uh, little conversation, you will be far more informed about LDL cholesterol and cardiovascular risk than your doctor will. Because the doctor's education in this, in this area has been largely provided by Big Pharma. And Big Pharma has a huge multi-billion dollar stake in keeping the wool pull, pulled over your, doc, your doctor's eyes, including by continuing this fictitious number called LDL cholesterol. So what is LDL cholesterol? Well, it's, it's meant to be a very crude and indirect way to count the number of particles in your bloodstream that lead to heart disease, okay? So if I take blood, take your red blood cells out, and take that clear plasma that's left and spin it down at high speed in a centrifuge, the lipoproteins, the fat-carrying proteins in the bloodstream, I'm sorry, in the plasma, layer out. High density goes to the bottom, low and very low density goes to the top. Each layer in that spun sample is a little different, but they all share several components. They all have cholesterol, they all have triglycerides and phospholipids and various proteins. Well, this was especially difficult in the 1950s, 1960s. How do you actually count the particles, the microscopic particles in each layer? Not an easy thing to do back then. And so what work at the NIH did is they figured out they just measure one thing in each layer. In this case, they chose cholesterol. They're gonna measure the cholesterol in each layer. They measured the cholesterol in all layers, that's total cholesterol. They measured the cholesterol in the low density layer, that's LDL cholesterol. They measured the cholesterol in the high density layer, that's HDL cholesterol, et cetera. Well, even that was laborious. So they conceived of a very crude equation to kind of guesstimate the LDL cholesterol value. And so they got, you measure total cholesterol and some other the numbers, and you come up with a very crude calculation for LDL cholesterol. So when, when you're given an LDL cholesterol, it's not even been measured, it's been calculated. Well, anybody can do simple math, but what if the equation itself is deeply flawed? It assumes we all eat the same. It assumes we all have normal weight. It, all, it assumes we all have favorable triglycerides. It assumes we all eat the same. Uh, it assumes we haven't cut carbohydrates. Because if you cut carbohydrates in your diet, it invalidates the equation, okay? So in other words, you're being given a number, LDL cholesterol, that was a crude indirect measure in the first place, two, is calculated based on an outdated and crude uh, uh, calculation, Three, if we follow the lifestyles we follow, where we cut carbs, as we do in Wheat Belly and Undoctored, as well as some other programs like Paleo and Keto and uh, low-carb programs, you invalidate the equation, the, the free will calculation used to calculate LDL cholesterol. Another factor, another thing to know about is LDL particles, not LDL cholesterol, LDL particles themselves, the particles in that layer, that low-density layer, are highly variable. They, can, they differ in size and charge and ability to, to cause heart disease. So large LDL particles are caused by fat consumption. And they're cleared very rapidly, cleared about 24 hours after consuming a fat. And they're not very adherent to the artery wall. They're not very prone to oxidation. They're not very uh, likely to enter the arterial wall. Small LDL particles, on the other hand, they're small, they can get into things, into crevices and cracks. They're much more adherent. They're much more prone to oxidation and glycation, and they last many days longer, about five, six, seven days as compared to one day of large LDL particles. So once you see a, lipo, a real lipoprotein test where you're actually taking that layer and studying it and quantifying what's in there, you'll see right away that there's a spread of different particles. But when you see small LDL particles, you know they're bad, and you also know how you got it, because they only come from grains and sugars. So this, the obvious solution here is get rid of grains and sugars, right? So what happens when you do that? Well, let's pretend we have a, an, an NMR panel. That's a common lipoprotein method for testing. And the total LDL particle number in that layer is 2,000 nanomoles per liter, okay? And of those 2,000, let's say 1,500 of them are the abnormal small. Well, you cut out grains and sugars, you take other steps in my programs, like vitamin D, magnesium, fish oil, uh, cultivation of bowel flora, et cetera. You reverse insulin resistance, and that helps a lot too. And LDL particle number of 2,000 drops to more like 700 or 800. Small LDL of 1,500 drops to 
zero or other very low number. And alongside that, you have a dramatic rise in HDL, the good, on a standard panel. HDL shifts to a larger particle and is more effective in protecting you. Triglycerides drop, and thereby VLDL particles that are rich in triglycerides also drop. So it's not uncommon for triglycerides on our programs to drop from, say, 300 to 44 or some other great number. And that's really important because it's triglycerides that affect what your LDL particles do. The higher your triglycerides, the more destructive the LDL particles become. And that's because triglycerides occur in the bloodstream as very low density lipoproteins. And those VLDL particles love to interact with the LDL particles and make them triglyceride enriched. And that's part of the process that leads to small LDL particles. So the cru crucial factor in generating small LDL particles is high triglycerides, high VLDL that interact with LDL, convert them to small values. But you now know that it's grains and sugars that underlie, that start that process in the first place. Now, and you'll see that the panel, the blood proteins that you get, the results you get on basic efforts like ours are far superior, far superior to the kinds of results you get with statin drugs. Statin drugs don't achieve those other effects. They don't reduce VLDL and triglycerides very much. They don't raise HDL hardly at all. And they are non-selective in how they reduce LDL particle number. They reduce good ones, they reduce bad ones. But our diet is selective. Our efforts are selective for reducing the small LDL and correcting those other associated distortions. So if you want real reduction in cardiovascular risk, you won't find it in a statin drug. You certainly won't find it in a low-fat diet. You'll find it in the elimination of the factors that lead to propagation of small LDL particles, propagation of high triglycerides and VLDL. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a mouthful, I know. But uh, the, value, the, the results you get on this kind of a program are far superior than what you can get from a pill.